Hey guys, Eric here from Muskie Homebrew, and today we're going to be talking about our three gallon brew in a bag induction cooktop 1800 watt setup coming up next. Previously reviewed the IC100B from Avalon Bay, uh, linked at one of these spots. Um, it is a 1800 watt induction cooktop that initially we were going to use to heat up our strike and sparge water for our 5 and 10 gallon setup, but then we later found out that we could actually do 3 gallon batches. We have run into a few issues, but we have also found some solutions to those issues which I'm going to cover in this video. So we have paired our Avalon Bay IC100B induction plate cooktop with our uh, tall boy kettle sold by Northern Brewer, even though I believe it's discontinued now. The reason I do like this kettle though is because it is actually taller than it is wider on a normal kettle. So hence the tall boy name. So the reason I like this kettle is because the surface area of the bottom of the kettle matches the top of the induction cooktop, rather than overflowing the sides of it and overtaking it. Other than the kettle, we have a Blickman 3-inch uh, non-adjustable thermometer and a Brew Hardware ball valve 3-piece on the very bottom. One of the big things uh, that's different between the propane burner and an induction cooktop is the BTU ratings. Our propane burner, if you go back to some of our older homebrew setups or homebrew day videos, uh, we use a banjo burner, which is 210,000 BTUs an hour uh, coming from propane. Now 1800 watts converted to BTUs is roughly 6600 to 7000 BTUs. So there's a big difference and that big difference comes into heating time and how long it takes to get to each step during the brewing process. So one of the first things we noticed after the first brew day was uh, it was hard to maintain a good boil uh, with about three and a half gallons of water or wort in the kettle. So one of the things we did to fix that was uh, we went to Lowe's and got some reflective insulation and cut out holes for the thermometer and uh, ball valve on the bottom. We also used Velcro to help stick it together and easily remove it when we're done brewing. The second thing we worked on was reducing the amount of water that we had to boil after the mash. So in theory we did a partial boil. We originally went from uh, three to four gallons of water and trying to boil that. That didn't work out so well. So we reduced it down to about two and a half, three gallons of water to be able to hold that boil through for 60 minutes or more. So then once we're done with our boil and it's all cooled down, then we go ahead and add our additional water to it, uh, which also helps with the cooling process. One of the reasons I like doing the three gallon batch is because we're only using this little setup here. Uh, whereas if we're doing a five or 10 gallon batch, we've got to use all of the other equipment on this cart here. So the second reason I really like the three gallon batches is purely because three gallon batches really kind of suit me a little bit better. Um, I'm the only one in my household that drinks the beer that I brew, unfortunately. So five gallons is just a lot to drink in at one time. I would rather have a variety of three gallon batches rather than a few just five gallon kegs in my keyser. One of the other positives I do like about this system is um, throughout the mash, we are actually able to reheat it and continually heat it throughout the mash. Now it is important to keep stirring it so the heat gets moved around throughout the whole kettle instead of just burning everything on the bottom. But with our propane in our uh, grot cooler setup on our four full five and 10 gallon setup, we are unable to reheat during the mash without having to add additional water. So that is another positive with doing this three gallon batch system setup. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was that now that we're doing induction, we're talking about an all electric brew system versus a all propane system. The typical brew day that we've done so far on the induction cooktop, we've used about three to four kilowatt hours of electricity, which here in Indianapolis equates to about 40 to 50 cents of electricity. For propane, however, when you're getting refills for 15 to $20, and you're getting four brew days out of a single propane tank, you're talking about three to five dollars uh, per batch of beer that you're brewing just in gas alone. So I've got a little sheet here 
a crude drawing of some of our times and energy that we've used for a few of our first few few of our first few brew days. More particularly, just the ramp times for strike water and uh, the ramp time to get to a boil from mash temperature. So strike temperature going from 75 degrees to 168 degrees uh, for our strike water took us roughly between 30 and 40 minutes. And our boil ramp time to go from our mash out temperature to 212 degrees roughly boiling temperature took us roughly uh, 10 to 20 minutes on each of those brew days. You've got different variables like uh, cold weather outside and different temperatures of water, so take those into consideration. For comparison between propane and electricity induction, you're taking about twice as long to do a three gallon batch induction wise, 1800 watts, versus your 200,000 BTU propane burner on a five gallon batch. Uh, so one of the issues I do still have with the induction cooktop is that when you get to the boiling process, the boil is still a little weak. It's just not as strong as I would like it. Uh, typically what you would see from a propane is a nice strong boil. Um, this does still boil it, but it's just not as strong as I would like. So one of the reasons I do like this as a beginner three gallon setup is that you can utilize this setup here for your future five gallon and 10 gallon for your heating your strike and your sparge water for five and 10 gallon batches. And that's one of the reasons why I believe this is a perfect setup for someone who is trying to uh, brew smaller batches and still yield three gallons of beer uh, without having to buy all the additional equipment. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. Maybe I didn't cover it in this video. Uh, I will get to them and answer them in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe to this video, and we will see you guys next time. Cheers.